Hi everyone, I'm Molly, the Islands Education Manager here on Martha's Vineyard with the Trustees. If you aren't familiar with the Trustees, we are Massachusetts largest conservation and preservation organization with 118 properties throughout the entire state. So for today's lesson, we will be learning about some of our local shorebirds and studying a specific adaptation that each shorebird has that allows it to eat certain foods. Now this lesson is designed for early elementary school students, grades one to three, but of course can be enjoyed and appreciated uh, by all ages. So for today's lesson, you will need some materials if you will be following along with me. I'll go through these materials now, but feel free to pause your screen and look around your own home for these. And they don't have to be specifically the same, but if you have most of them, that would be great. First thing you'll want is a spoon. Everyone should probably have a spoon at your house. A pair of scissors. A pair of tweezers. A clothespin, a spring clothespin. A cup. Doesn't have to be this size, can be any size. Some marbles. With the activity we'll be doing, I'll have 10 of each of these things, but just a couple is fine as well. But if you do have 10, that would be great. So 10 marbles, a lock nut. If you do not have a lock nut, look for something that is similar in size and shape. Clam shells or small oyster shells, uh, scallop shells. So any shells that you can find. and some pipe cleaners. So you can take obviously bigger pipe cleaners and then cut them into smaller sizes, a couple inches in length. And then finally, you'll want a tray, Tupperware, a cardboard box, something that you have at your house that you'll be able to put these materials into. So today we are studying four different shorebirds. And in particular, we are looking at the beak of a shorebird. So a beak is the mouth of that bird and the shape of a shorebird's beak allows it to eat certain things. So if we look at our poster here, you'll see four different birds. And then there are also four different animals that shorebirds eat. The first one that we're looking at is here. This is the black-backed gull. You've probably seen this gull before when you've been at the beach with family or friends and maybe it's stolen a bag of potato chips or some french fries from you because they are quite scavengers. But what we want to focus on is what does this gull eat based on the shape of its beak or bill? And these scissors are a great example of that gull's beak. So gulls can have pretty strong beaks and they're able to crunch into things just like a pair of scissors. Next, here we have the piping plover. This photo isn't to scale, but the plover is very small and it has a small, small beak right there, just like a pair of tweezers. Next we have this guy. This is the American oyster catcher. And you'll notice its beak is very long and orange. If you've come out with us on a trip to Cape Polk Wildlife Refuge, you may have seen one of these American oyster catchers. So the beak of this bird is like a clothespin and it's able to crunch into things that it's going to burrow in the mud for. Then our fourth bird is a duck. This is a surf scotter and this duck has a bill like a spoon. So it can scoop fish and minnows out of the water 
with its spoon-like bill. Okay, so now we know the four different birds that we're studying today. But let's take a close look at four different types of animals that these shorebirds and birds eat. The first one here is a blue crab. These blue crabs can be found in the intertidal zone quite often where the ocean meets the shore. That's why it's in this area on the poster. Then we have a sand flea. This is very, very small. You may have seen them when you've gone to the beach in the sand when you were playing in the waves. And then we have a clam. This clam burrows down into the mud. So anything eating this clam has to have a long enough beak in order to reach it. And then finally, we have a minnow or a small fish that's out here in the ocean. So let's think about, to start with, our black back gull. Now remember, this big black back gull has a scissor-like beak. Now take a minute and think about the four different animals that are on our poster. And which one do you think the gull is most adapted to eat based on the shape of its beak? So which one do you think this gull would be able to easily eat? So if you said the blue claw crab, you're correct. The black back gull can crush through the shell of the blue claw crab in order to eat it. Now how about our duck, the surf scoter? Do you think it would eat a sand flea up on the sand? Or a clam that's down in the mud? or a minnow that's out in the ocean. If you said the minnow, then you're correct. So with its spoon-like bill, this surf scoter will scoop up that fish and gobble it down. Next, we have our piping plover with its small itsy bitsy beak. So will it be able to eat a minnow that's way out in the ocean, a clam that's burrowed down in the mud, a sand flea in the sand, or a blue crab that's quite big. If you said the sand flea here, you're right. So with its little beak, it can catch little sand fleas or little worms and eat those guys right up because this beak wouldn't be big enough to get down to this clam or even open up a clam with a beak as small as that. And then finally, we have our American oyster catcher. With its clothespin-like beak, what do you think the oyster catcher will, would be able to catch based on our four different animals? The minnow? the clam, the sand flea, or the blue crab. So if you said the clam, you are right. With its long beak, it can burrow into the mud, pull out this clam, and pry it open. Think about its name, an American oyster catcher. So it can also do the same thing with an oyster. It can pick it up and pry it open. Okay, so our next step of this lesson is to do a hands-on activity with these different tools and some other materials that will represent our different foods or will pretend our crabs, clams, and fish. Okay, so now we're at the fun part of our lesson, the activity. So hopefully at this point, you've been able to gather the materials that you need for this activity. Again, a pair of tweezers, a clothespin, 
pair of scissors, and a spoon. If you weren't able to find all of these tools, that's okay, but if you just have a few, that's great. Then we'll, we're using these examples of our food sources that our beaks will be eating. So again, hopefully you've been able to find some marbles, pipe cleaners, small shells, and lock nuts. Again, if you weren't able to find these, another thing you can do is swap out these materials for food. So instead of pipe cleaners, maybe you could use gummy worms if you have any gummy worms at home for a special treat. Instead of shells, maybe some corn flakes. Instead of marbles, how about some blueberries? Instead of these lock nuts, maybe goldfish. So think about the shapes of these and do you have any food at home that would match these shapes. So for this activity, what we'll be doing is trying to eat with our beaks these different types of food. And we'll see which beak is able to eat which food. So what I'm going to do, is the first step, is to combine these foods all together in the tray. So I'm going to just sort of mix them around. Okay. And another way you can do this is choose to use one food at a time as well. But how we're going to do it for now is use all the foods all together. So you have all the different types of food in your tray. Now what you're going to do is pretend that you're one of those shorebirds. To start with, you'll be the piping plover with the tweezer-like beak. And you'll need your cup at this point. This is your stomach or the bird's stomach. So if you have a parent, a sibling, or someone in your house, any grandparent or caregiver that's there with you, they can time this part of the activity for you. You'll want to time yourself for 15 seconds and see with one hand and your beak, so the other hand behind your back, what different types of food can you pick up within that 15 seconds and put into your stomach. So I'll give you the example here. So the 15 seconds starts, I'm going to try to pick up these different types of food. And as you can see, some will be easier to pick up than others. So I'm starting to realize, oh, with my little tweezer-like beak, I can pick up these worms, my pipe cleaners, into my stomach. We get those marbles or the shells, the lug nuts or our crabs, or my worms. When your 15 seconds is up, you take your stomach, you'll empty that on the table, and then count how many different types of food did you get. What is the food? So remember, a pipe cleaner are worms, and how many did you collect? One, two, three, four, five. So if you have a little piece of paper, you can write down that with your tweezer beak, you collected five different worms. So put those back into your tray and you'll use your next beak. So if you remember, this beak is the American oyster catcher, our clothespin. So again, with one hand and give yourself 15 seconds, see what you can pick up with this beak and put into your stomach. And when the 15 seconds is up, do the same thing as before. Empty your stomach and count how many different types of food were you able to collect. So we have three shells for our American Oyster Catcher beak. So put the food back in and you'll do the same thing with your scissor beak, the black back gull, and the spoon beak. So now you can pause your video and run through that activity just as I explained it 
And remember to write down how many different types of food you were able to collect with each different beak type. And then we'll gather back together and look at our results. Okay, so when I completed the activity, these are the results that I had. And we'll see, and you can compare if they're similar to your results too. So with our scissor-like beak, I was able to pick up the love nuts, which are like our crabs, like the blue crab. So I was able to pick those love nuts up the easiest with our scissor-like beak. And then with our piping plover, with its little tweezer beak, I was able to pick up, just like you saw in the video earlier, our pipe cleaners are like little worms or on our poster the sand flea here right something small with a small little beak that can be picked up and then with my spoon the spoon like bill of the surf scoter I was able to only pick up with this spoon easily the marbles is that what happened with you as well And then finally, our American Oyster Catcher and our clothespin, I was able to pick up the clam shells. So my small oyster shells I had and some scallop shells and clam shells I was able to pick up. So those were the favorite foods of these different shorebirds based on the different food types that we had. Now a follow-up part of this lesson is to head out to your own backyard with a piece of paper and a pencil and just sit there quietly for a bit and see if you can spot any birds. Once you do see a bird, take your pencil and draw that bird on your piece of paper. And in particular, take a close look at the beak of the bird. Make sure you write down and draw the shape of that beak, the size of it, and just watch for a while of what that bird is doing out there in your yard. When you come back inside, you can answer a few of these questions. So the first one is, are the beaks different of those birds that you saw and how so? Was one of the beaks very small, like the piping plover that we learned about today? Or was one very long, like the American oyster catcher? And what were those birds doing in your yard? How might their behavior or actions be different based on the size and shape of their beaks? And finally, can you guess what type of food the bird in your yard was eating based on the shape and size of its beak? So I would love if you would share with me your drawings or any photos that you have of yourself doing this activity and post it in the comments section of this video. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. You can find more online lessons and activities at thetrustees.org slash at home. So the trustees were a nonprofit organization. So we really rely on support from people just like you. So please consider becoming a member of the trustees or renewing your membership or donating during this time to help support our work. You can simply go to thetrustees.org slash join us. I look forward to seeing you next week.